Welcome to my grandpa's train. Today on my workbench is this antique electronic train sound generator system. There's no manufacturing name or date or anything on this. So as far as I can tell, this was completely scratch built or at least built from plans in perhaps a uh, old model railroader magazine or a similar publication. Now, what I was able to find out is both of these boxes are built to resemble train sounds of a specific diesel type. Um, each one of these selections changes the tone just slightly. And then same for the bottom device. The bottom device generates diesel engine sounds. The top device generates a horn. What I want to do is take apart each device, look inside, and see what it looks like. Then I will test everything out, power it on, and demonstrate what each individual switch will do. All right, let's open this up together. I have not looked inside this yet, so let's see what mysteries are inside. Wow, it's actually um, nicer than I expected. Let's bring the camera in a little bit. So as I figured, this was a 1980s product, um, Project Box. But this is actually, um, I think this was a kit that was manufactured. So we have a uh, date here, 1988, CVP products. So I'll look that up later. And this is actually called Horn One. Very interesting. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. I was kind of thinking this would be um, all discrete components. Uh, but this is all integrated circuits. So we have two integrated circuit chips and um, some resistors, large capacitors, and that's about all, all as much as I can identify. Oh, and then back here, there's a couple power transistors. So I'm, I'm going to assume that one of these is to amplify the audio. I have a splice job here. So this is our power coming in. And then uh, we have on-off switch, our indicator LED over here. You just see that in the corner. This is interesting. So all these little toggle switches are actually um, on a ribbon cable. So I imagine changing out these integrated circuits would change the characteristics of the audio that this would produce. But because it's just a bunch of oscillators producing, producing different tones, uh, there's not a whole lot I can do about this. Now this is unusual. This knob does not go to anything. It is completely disconnected. I'm not sure if there was a place for it to go to, but seeing that these are kit project boxes, I'm not surprised that this was doing something else at one point in its life and it just got left in. So I will hook this up and um, I'll demonstrate the different tones that this thing could generate. There's two outs, one's an aux and one's amplified. I'm going to go into the amplified connection. Okay, now just a warning, this produces extremely loud sounds. Interesting, so this actually has a pilot LED on the board. Did not know that. So, um, one of the tones that this produces is uh, closest to a train horn is this one here. But each of these switches actually activates a different oscillator. So, I'm just going to run through the switches and you'll hear a different tone each switch produces. Most of them are pretty awful, but individually, um, here's what they sound like. So as you could hear, um, each switch has two positions and activates a different tone that the oscillator generates. Also, there's a lot of leakage on this board. So when I have all the switches in the off position, you can still hear all the tones coming all at once. But the best horn that sound that I can come up with, switch one is up, switches four and five are down. And that generates a pretty convincing diesel horn. Okay, I'm gonna put this back together and then I'm going to look inside the other box. Okay, I'm going to take the lid off the diesel sound generator box 
And now I have a little bit of an expectation of what to find inside. Let's see what is under door number two. Wow. That is complicated. That is certainly beyond my skill level. Um, so I don't expect to be able to interpret what any of this does, except that I can see there's a lot of integrated circuits and there's a lot of um, resistors and capacitors all over the board. So we'll just kind of take a look here and see what you can see. Now, what I'm also going to do is see if I can find some information on the internet about what this is and what it does. If I can find some kind of manual or paperwork of any kind, because this is sort of a commercially manufactured product in kit form, that may tell me what all the connections actually do and how it was intended to be operated and what is the best way to set it up. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to power this unit up and then we will test the each of these knobs and hear um, what kind of sounds this thing can generate. It's actually sort of convincing. Okay, let's switch this thing on and see what it does. Okay, so I've noticed that this thing takes a little while for the circuitry to stabilize um, once it's powered on. <clears throat> the pitches, the tones of the audio need to uh, acclimate sort of as it warms up. That's why you heard the pitch going down in the sounds. Now it's quite a bit lower than it was. Okay, so we'll, we'll turn each of these around individually. I am going to go through and clean these dials on the inside because this one crackles a lot. Um, so this one, I believe, is the main volume. Transformer also hums. So we have load factor. You can't really hear that through this tiny little speaker, but it adds a lot of rumble to the sound. I think through a large speaker, that would add a pretty cool effect. The next one is the engine sound. By itself, it sounds pretty awful, but we have the turbocharger. Again, by itself, not all that impressive. And it also has a sound for radiator fans. That does sound like an airplane propeller to me, so that's a pretty convincing um, radiator fan noise. But when you combine all these together is when the sounds get pretty convincing of a realistic locomotive. All right, well, that is a look inside this vintage electronic diesel locomotive and horn sound generator kits by CVP. Um, like I said, I'm gonna check into this online. I'm also gonna go through and spray each of these dials so that they don't crackle. Um, I really wanna find some kind of um, assembly instructions or manual. And if anybody out there watching happens to know anything about something like this that they've had experience with or seen in a model railroad or magazine, please do let me know by leaving a comment. Um, or you can also link information in comments. That would be extremely helpful. Okay, so I learned something new here with this diesel generator. I'm kind of excited actually, because this really changes the dynamics of how this thing will operate. I still haven't figured out if it can be modulated onto the track power, but I think without that, this is as close as it's gonna to get to realistic operation. This is designed to take in a feed from the uh, your transformer that runs the trains and it just varies the voltage so that I have a transformer hooked up to those two terminals called power pack and that does exactly what it says it does so when I turn the volume up the locomotive should be idling right about now 
Now, all I have to do is change the speed on the transformer and the sound changes with the um, RPMs of the locomotive. Plus, it not only does that, but the turbocharger sound is louder as it accelerates, and then when you decelerate, the radiator fan sounds are louder. Turn it this way. I'm also trying it with a different speaker just for grins. Here we go. Alright, so you can kind of hear the turbocharger spool up, the load intensifies as it's under power, and then as you slow it down, the turbocharger slows down and the radiator fans wind up, so you can hear those over the engine sounds. So that makes this thing a box that sounds pretty awful to something that's actually really quite ingenious and really cool. So I will definitely be implementing this on probably my HO scale layout. Um, and then you can use multiple speakers to place the locomotive sounds on various uh, places around the layout. Okay, the box is set up underneath the layout and it's tied to my transformer. 